On February 10, 2000, the Seattle Mariners traded away iconic center fielder Ken Griffey Jr. to the Cincinnati Reds. The package the Mariners got in the trade included center fielder Mike Cameron. There were questions on whether Mike Cameron could fill the void of a Mariner icon. How did he do with the Mariners? You will find out and see after a word from my sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. In just Mike Cameron's fourth game with the Mariners, Mike Cameron made this amazing catch at the wall, robbing Derek Jeter of a home run. Immediately, Cameron got a huge standing ovation and instantly earned the trust of Mariner fans. Following Mike Cameron's next at-bat, he did strike out, but after that, he was given another standing ovation. Mariners manager at the time, Lou Pinella, expressed his thoughts on Mike Cameron. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get an ovation for striking out. On August 1st, 2000, the Mariners squared off against the Boston Red Sox in Seattle, where the game went all the way to 19 innings. At first, the Mariners were trailing 4-0, but the Mariners did rally back to tie the game, and it remained the standstill until the 19th inning, where Mike Cameron hit a game-winning home run off former Mariner Jeff Facero ending the marathon. And I did have Jeff Facero to express his thoughts on that game. What was that experience like playing at a you're playing one of the most historical games in Mariners history, but what was it like playing in a long game like that? It's tiresome. I mean, you just get tired. And the only reason I was in that game, because I was the last pitcher that hadn't pitched in five days. I was supposed to start tomorrow. So I had to come into the game and pitch. Mm -hmm. And I was going to start in Oakland the next day. And I was the only guy that we could get out there on the mound and tie games still. And you're sitting around all day long. And as a starter, now I, this, I had to go back to a different routine to get ready to pitch in that game. Thanks in part to Mike Cameron's great defense and solid offensive production, the Mariners made the playoffs as a wild card. They swept the Chicago White Sox, but then fell short of the New York Yankees in the American League Championship Series. Mike Cameron did not contribute much in the playoffs, as he posted a 180 batting average. Also, I do have a video on the 2000 Mariners, so check that out with the link provided. 2001 would be the best season in Mike Cameron's career on top of the Mariners' historical regular season by winning 116 games, tying the Major League record with the 1906 Chicago Cubs. Mike Cameron himself hit 25 home runs, along with a career-high 110 RBIs and stole 34 bases. He even made the All-Star game for the first time of his career, where he doubled in the game thanks to his hustle. He also won the Gold Glove as well for the first time in his career. On August 19th, Mike Cameron hit two home runs against the New York Yankees, where one of them was a Grand Slam home run and tied the Mariner record eight RBIs in one game, joining Alvin Davis and Mike Blowers. After the Mariners won the American League West Division, Mike Cameron and Mark McLemore waved the American flag in respect to the recent events of September 11th attacks. I remember I was actually at this game and it was breathtaking to see the paying of respects led by Mike Cameron and Mark McLemore, who stated that it was his proudest moment as an American. The Mariners played against the Cleveland Indians in the American League Division Series where the Mariners won in five games at the skin of their teeth. Mike Cameron had a part in this series where he hit a two-run home run in Game 2 off Chuck Finley and hit an RBI double in Game 4 where the Mariners won that game when down 2-1 against the Indians in that series. Unfortunately, the Mariners did fall to the Yankees in Game 5 of the American League Championship Series for the second time in a row. Mike Cameron struggled in the series with a 176 batting average and driving in no runs. On May 2, 2002, Mike Cameron had a record day where he hit four home runs in one game, becoming the 14th player in Major League history to do so. He had two more opportunities to hit his fifth home run, but he got hit by the pitch and flied out to right field. Another fun fact about that performance, Mike Cameron and Brett Boone hit back-to-back -back home runs twice in one inning. They are still the only duo in Major League history to do so. Although Mike Cameron had a historical day in 2002, his overall production failed compared to his 2001 season in RBIs and batting average and led the American League in strikeouts with 176. The Mariners also missed the playoffs as well. 2003 was another lost season for the Seattle Mariners where they missed the playoffs again despite winning 93 games. However, there were a couple of bright spots in that season for Mike Cameron where he won his second gold glove and robbed a home run off Torrey Hunter. He also led the major league among center fielders in range factor as well of 3.42, and this is a number Ken Griffey Jr. never reached while he was with the Mariners.
After the 2003 season, Mike Cameron moved on to the New York Mets after the Mariners' lackluster effort to keep him. The Mariners offered him just a one-year $5 million contract, which was much less than the $7.4 million he was making in 2003. He ultimately signed a three-year $19.5 million contract with the Mets. Mike Cameron expressed, I wanted to be back. I tried hard to get back. In the end, it was kind of crazy, really different than I expected. It's like your dad tells you to get the hell out of the house. Losing Mike Cameron proved to be very costly for the 2004 season, as Randy Wynn could not fill the void. Mike Cameron would go on to play until the 2011 season, where he made strong contributions with the Mets and Padres. Overall for Mike Cameron, he hit 278 home runs and will always be remembered as a fantastic defensive player, great teammate, and a hard-working man. His contributions will never be forgotten in Seattle as he was a part of two playoff appearances and did an admirable job filling the void of Ken Griffey Jr. Until current center fielder Julio Rodriguez develops his career in the long term, Mike Cameron, in my opinion, remains to be the greatest center fielder after Ken Griffey Jr., and I am forever thankful for his contributions. Thanks for watching, and if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And here are more videos about the 2000 and 2001 Mariners, where Mike Cameron was a part of, so check those out.